Hello and welcome. I'm Kristen Eller, just Kristen, and I talk about science fiction and fantasy books and the awards that go with them. Today I'm reacting to the announcement of the Nebula shortlist for this year. Now, the Nebula Awards are voted on by the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. So this is an award that is awarded by authors, fellow authors of the genre. So a little bit different from the Hugos because the Hugos are voted by members of the Hugos, which can be anybody. Anybody can um, purchase a membership and become a nominating and voting member. So the, while the Hugos are more of a an award that's voted on by fans, the Nebulas are an award that's more voted on by actual writers, by peers. So let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to start with best novel. Um, for best novel, we have The Unbroken by C.L. Clark, A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark, Machinehood by S.B. Divya, A Desolation Called Peace by Arkady Martin, and Plague Birds by Jason Sanford. Now, <laughs> I was really surprised by the shortlist, to be honest. Um, almost all of these are debuts. The only one that is not a debut is A Desolation Called Peace, and this is a sequel to a debut. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know that I personally really have a lot of expertise or experience to be able to say this is what I expected or didn't expect to see necessarily, but I am just surprised that it's mostly debuts, and I am surprised by the books on here because I didn't particularly love any of these. None of these are in my top 10. Uh, a Desolation Called Peace might be. I, I did like A Desolation Called Peace. It wasn't one of my favorites of the year, but yeah. The Unbroken, A Master of Gin, and Machinehood. I read all of these, and all of them I almost DNF'd. I couldn't really get into them. Now, part of that is just personal taste, but like I said, I am just a little surprised that these are the, the nominations this year. Plug Birds, I actually know nothing about. I haven't heard anyone talking about that, so I guess I'm surprised just in that it doesn't seem to be one that people are talking about. All right, my neighborhood is being very noisy all of a sudden. <laughs> I was just expecting to see more like, I guess I was expecting to see more things like The, uh, the Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey or The Chosen and the Beautiful by Nevo or Barrowland by River Solomon. I don't know. I am gonna go ahead and read Plague Birds now that, I, now that it's on this list and kind of see maybe this is a hidden gem, I don't know but we'll see. Next, let's look at novellas. We have A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, which I am not surprised to see. That was really good, and Becky Chambers is a well-known favorite. I kind of expect to see this on the Hugo novella list also. Wouldn't be surprised. Then we have Fireheart Tiger by Elliot de Bodart. Now, this isn't a huge surprise, but also I thought it was kind of weak. I did not think this was the best novella. It's not in my top 10 novellas. Let's put it that way. But Elliot de Bedard is a big name. I, I don't know. I guess it makes sense that it's here. And then all of the rest of these are novellas that I have not heard of. Or let me actually explain. I, I've heard of them because when I went to go look them up on Goodreads, I had marked them as want to read, but I had then forgotten about them. So I have not heard anybody talking about any of these. I don't know anything about any of these, but let me just read off what we have. Um, the first one is, And What Can We Offer You Tonight by Premi Mohammed. Now, Premi Mohammed is an author that just recently kind of came on my radar and I was interested in reading some of their stuff. And I was looking at The Migration of Clouds and, and These Lifeless Things, which are also two novellas that are also eligible. Premi Mohammed has three eligible novellas this year, which is, I can't imagine being that prolific. So props to Premi Mohammed. But um, yeah, so this is like the one that I had not even realized existed and I asked my library to buy it and they did, so I, I will read that. Actually, I asked my library to buy all of these ones that I haven't read yet and they approved all of them, so thank you so much, library. Also on here we have Sun Daughters, Sea Daughters by Amy Ogden, Flowers for the Sea by Zinn E. Rocklin, The Necessity of Stars by E. Catherine Tobler, and The Giants of the Violet Sea by Eugenia Triantafilu. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But um, yeah, so this is, an interesting list. It's a long list. And let me go ahead and just talk briefly about Martha Wells and what a rock star she is because her novella, her Murderbot novella, Fugitive Telemetry, was nominated and she declined the nomination. And she explained on Twitter, yeah, I kind of, I called them up to see like, well, what would happen if I declined this? Because if it would just be a smaller ballot, I will stay on 
but if I drop off, that makes room for someone else, then I will definitely do that. And they said, oh, actually, sixth place was a three-way tie, so if you drop out, there's gonna be three more titles on here. So she said, oh yeah, definitely, this is a great deal, let's do that. So she did, and like, what a class act. I, I love Martha Wells. She is so supportive of other authors. She seems like just truly a wonderful human being. So I'm I'm really impressed by her. So yeah, I'm I don't know what to say about any of these because I've not read them. I am really surprised that I don't recognize these because I read a lot of novellas. I've read I read 14 novellas this year and I, I don't see any of the ones on my list on here except for A Song for the Wild, Built, and Fireheart Tiger. And I'm surprised to not see A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow. I'm surprised to not see Remote Control by Nadia Korafor. I'm surprised to not see either of the Adrian Tchaikovsky novellas. I'm surprised to not see anything by Catherine Valente. I, I don't know. So it, it kind of makes me wonder is, you know, the science fiction fantasy writers of America, are they trying to promote like lesser known names or debut authors? Is there an agenda going on here? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so then Novelette, I don't recognize any of these except for Colors of the Immortal Palette by Carolyn M. Yoakum, which I am in the middle of. I have not finished reading that yet, but I've heard that it's really good. Um, the other ones on here, there's a John Wiswell story called The Story Isn't the Story. There's also Emmett by Lauren Ring. Just Enough Rain by P.H. Lee, and O2 Arena by Ochinachovwi Donald Opeki, Ekpeki. And I haven't read any no novelettes yet this year, so I'm not, I wasn't really expecting to see any particular one. Although I guess I was expecting to see Bots of the Lost Ark by Suzanne Palmer because I believe The Secret Life of Bots, which is the prequel, um, did win Best Novelette the year that that came out. So. Kind of surprised that Bots of the Lost Ark isn't here, but other than that, no thoughts. Uh, next we have short stories. We have Mr. Death by Alex E. Harrow, Proof by Induction by Jose Pablo Ariarte, Let All the Children Boogie by Sam J. Miller, Laughter Among the Trees by Suzanne Palumbo, Where Oaken Hearts Do Gather by Sarah Pinsker, and For Lack of a Bed by John Wiswell. And I hadn't read any of these. Um, I had read quite a few short stories. I don't see any of the ones that I read here, but it's short stories are one of those things. There's just so many of them. I, I don't know how anyone chooses based on an exhaustive reading. I, I don't know that anyone does that. So these are, I, I don't know. I guess I, I just don't have a lot of faith that the absolute best short stories are selected for shortlist. I think it's just the favorites of whatever anybody just happened to read. I did read For Lack of a Bed by John Wiswell after the list came out, and it's delightful. I really, really liked it. It's, it's a really good story. I haven't read the other ones yet, but I will probably get to them. Then we have the middle grade and young adult fiction. So we have Victories Greater Than Death by Charlie Jane Anders, Thornwood by Leah Sipas, Redemptor by Jordan Ifueco, A Snake Falls to Earth by Darcy Little Badger, Root Magic by Eden Royce, and Iron Widow by Zirin J. Zhao. I have heard good things about Iron Widow. I've heard good things about A Snake Falls to Earth and Redemptor. I have not heard of the other three. I'm not really a YA reader, so I don't have a lot to say on that, but good luck to all of them. Um, best dramatic presentation. So we have Encanto, which I approve. That was a really good movie. Then we have The Green Knight, which I have not heard of. I don't know anything about it. We have Loki season one. I'm not really into Marvel movies and shows. Well, that's not true. I watched some of them, but I haven't seen Loki. I'm not really caught up on the Loki part of that show or megaverse or whatever you call it. Um, Shanghai and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I did not see this movie, but it has the hot guy from Kim's Convenience. So um, Space Sweepers. I don't know anything about WandaVision season one. That was really good. I enjoyed that. What We Do in the Shadows, season three, have not heard of that, and that's it. I am just, I'm sad, I'm not surprised, but I am sad that Infinity Train, season four, I think, duet, didn't make it. Infinity Train is a show I just discovered this year, and it's so delightful. It's an animated show, but it's deep, and it's really, it's just really good. I, I think it deserves to be on here. And then game writing. 
I haven't heard of any of these. I'm just going to go ahead and say that, but they look like fun. So I should check them out. Actually, my husband is more of the game person in our family. I like, I really enjoy board games and I enjoy video games, but he is on another level with those things. He's actually writing a role-playing game right now based on South American mythology and folklore. Super cool. If you're interested, I can link his Twitter below. He is getting really close to publishing, so that's exciting. But um, he said that he has all of these and we should try playing them together. So if you're interested in seeing videos, like maybe vlogs of us trying out these different games, let me know in the comments below and I will prioritize that because that would be fun. And that's it. What did you think of the Nebula Award sh shortlist this year? Was it a surprise? Did you see it coming? What, do you have any insight into why some of these may have been chosen or other titles not have been chosen? Have you read these? What did you think? I want to hear all your thoughts. So thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in, in seeing more videos about science fiction and fantasy books and awards such as the Nebula and Hugo Awards, make sure that you're subscribed. Give this video a like and I really hope to see you next time. Bye.